But Sidon, he promised that she would be destroyed, that blood would flow in her streets. But he didn't say that the city would not be rebuilt there. He didn't say that the city would vanish and disappear and be standing in the midst of the sea. Well, the city of Sidon was rebuilt from the actual stones and the actual rubble of the old city on precisely the same spot where it had stood before. We see the same thing about other cities round about. The city of Ashkelon in the southern part of Gaza. About Ashkelon, we read that it would be completely destroyed, and that it would never stand again, that it would become a place of desolation. Let's read the prophecies about the city of Ashkelon, some distance south of Tyre. Zephaniah says, Ashkelon will become a place of desolation. And the holy prophet Zachary says, Ashkelon shall become uninhabited. Now this was given as a future sign, because it wasn't completely fulfilled for 1,500 years. The city of Ashkelon was built in about 2,000 years before Christ. And it was a very great city even in the time of Christ, quite a, a long time after this prophecy had been given. Well, in the year 1270, the Muslims came down through Gaza, and they destroyed the city of Ashkelon, and laid it waste, and filled in its beautiful harbor, so that it could never be used again. What is the condition of this city now? The, Encyclop the Encyclopedia Britannica says of Ashkelon today, it is now a desolate site on the sea coast, 12 miles north of Giza. The site of ancient Ashkelon stands in a very fruitful and green and fertile valley, and yet it's never been re-inhabited. It has never been rebuilt. It still stands desolate to this day in fulfillment of the prophecy of God. Although other cities round about have been rebuilt, Geza, Askelon, Assad, and all the others about whom the Lord prophesied their destruction, but he never prophesied that they would become places of desolation and that they would never be inhabited again. Another great testimony from Old Testament prophet, prophecy is about the kingdom of Egypt. The prophecy of Ezekiel about Egypt was fulfilled over a period of 2,000 years. And this was done especially by God so that no one could say that the prophecy was fulfilled accidentally. That Ezekiel could look out and see the destruction of Egypt coming because armies were marching on her or something. But over a 2,000 year period, an amazing prophecy about Egypt was fulfilled. Let's summarize this prophecy from the 29th through the 32nd chapters of Ezekiel. And you can read these prophecies for yourself in their completeness. Ezekiel 29, 14 through 32, 15. But let's summarize these prophecies. Here's what God prophesied for, Ezekiel, for Egypt through Ezekiel. Egypt will become a humble and debased nation. Her great cities will be wasted and ruined. Strangers will take over and rule her. Never again will an Egyptian prince rule in Egypt. Never again would an Egyptian rule the country of Egypt after the strangers came in and destroyed and took over the land. Well, let's look at an historical summary of what's happened to Egypt since this prophecy came to pass. Egypt declined in power and was conquered by Alexander of Macedon. He didn't completely waste the land, but he built a new capital and he named it as he used to always do Alexandria after himself, his favorite hero. He did not waste the land, and he built a new completely non-Egyptian capital, and he established Greek rulers. And the Greeks of the family of General Ptolemy ruled the land until the Romans took control. Cleopatra, by the way, was a Greek. She was not an Egyptian. The Romans established a dictatorship in Alexandria and totally humiliated the Egyptians. And this lasted for 600 years. And finally, the Arabs invaded Egypt and burned and destroyed her greatest cities and drove the Egyptians, who in modern times are called Copts, into poverty and slavery. All the great ancient cities of Egypt were destroyed and laid at waste. The Coptic language practically vanished for centuries. No one of, of Egyptian ancestry ever rose to power or managed to rule again in Egypt. There's another interesting prophecy about the great city of Memphis in Egypt that was given at the same time. All the great Egyptian cities, Memphis, Thebes, all the others, were completely laid waste and destroyed. 
But God made a special prophecy about the city of Memphis. About the city of Memphis, he said, Thus saith the Lord, I will destroy the idols and cause the idols to cease from Memphis. Now this was not said about Thebes or any of the other great cities of Egypt, but only about Memphis. And today, what is left of Memphis? A few piles of rubble and a name. The city of Memphis has been totally destroyed, totally obliterated. The idols ceased from Memphis, although they continue to exist in other ancient cities of Egypt. The time that we have to cover our Bible study on the air is almost over. And uh, we're not going to be able to go as far as we would like to. But we want to look at one last prophecy before we finish. And this is the prophecy of Isaiah and Jeremiah concerning Babylon. And I think this will be sufficient to establish our proof of the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy in exactness. Let's take a look at the prophecies about Babylon. Thus thou Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never again be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall a Bedouin pitch tents there, nor shall shepherds take their flocks in to rest there, says the prophet Isaiah. And the holy prophet Jeremy, speaking in the spirit, says to Babylon, Thou shalt be desolate forever, Babylon. Thou shalt become a heap and a dwelling place for jackals, an astonishment and a ridicule of nations, without inhabitants. And he adds, Though Babylon should mount to heaven, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet her destroyers shall come unto her, saith the Lord. And behold, not only did this come to pass, but it holds absolutely true to this day. Not only is the ancient great Babylon a pile of ruins and rubble to this day, but wandering Bedouins considered to be inhabited by demons. A many archaeologists have tried to get Bedouin workers to go into the city with them and remain overnight for excavations. The Bedouins refuse to do so. They will not pitch their tents in the site of Babylon because they consider it to be a desolated and a place inhabited by evil. And so they go far off in the distance to pitch their tents. Neither do the Bedouins or the shepherds take their sheep or allow their sheep to graze amidst the ruins of Babylon for fear that they'll be become possessed by something evil. And so the precise fulfillment of this prophecy is so clear and so definite that we can find no other prophecy on earth or no other supposed or imaginary prophecies on earth that can boast what the scriptural prophecies can boast. The absolute precise fulfillment of prophecy. If Babylon had been rebuilt, if the Bedouins made camp there or pitched tents there, if any one point of this prophecy was not fulfilled completely, then we could have doubts about the Holy Scripture and the prophecy of the Bible. But you see, the prophecy of the Holy Scripture comes to us from the all-knowing and all-seeing God. And it is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit through his prophets. And therefore, it cannot err. It cannot be wrong. It cannot fail to come to pass. And those who hope that the prophecies about the last days, about the judgment coming of Christ and the judgment will not come to pass, because such a long time has passed since Christ walked on the earth, forget it. The prophecies about Egypt took 2,000 years to come to pass. The prophecy about Ascalon was fulfilled after 1,500 years. And so the prophecies of God are fulfilled in the fullness of his time, not in the fullness of our time, but in the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God. All these things come to pass as a revelation to mankind. And if we see these Old Testament prophecies fulfilled with such precision and such exactness, how could anyone doubt when the Messiah came and they saw all the prophecies about Jesus fulfilled from the Old Testament times? And mark you that the prophet Daniel gave the exact year when Christ would walk and preach upon the face of the earth. And the Jews, the people who were keepers of the law and the keepers of the scripture at that time, should very well have known who he was. And if all these prophecies have come to pass so exactly and so precisely, we know without doubt that all the prophecies of the New Testament will equally